Welcome back guys to another RB match with the Bearcat. We're starting off at high altitude uh, on Norway. LF Mark 9 passing through. Low altitude engine, by the way. <laughs> These outperform really easy. <laughs> uh, this is uh, the last match uh, before I spade it. French bearcat. Uh, so I wanted to show it to you so you have a decent understanding of the performance of the bearcat when it's uh, fully upgraded. And I think it, this will uh, also show that the, the bearcat is one of the of those fighters that can also fight for a very long time and stay in battle and be effective where other fighters wouldn't have to return to base right, uh, already. And the bearcat up front got shot by the key 84 uh, Staying high because the Tempest is also coming in. Luckily I'm not alone. Spitfire is really helpful at this at this moment. Because it's distracting the enemies as well. And I let the key 84 pass through and go after the Tempest because in my opinion that was the easier target at, at this point. Crit him. And we get him while he tries to straight out. And we get we can pull up in the right in time to get the key 84. Get him. But sadly here the key 84 kills the Spitfire that was flying uh, on my side here. So it's two players down. Um, but as you can see we lost a lot more play players than they did. And I don't even know where the enemies are at this point, which makes me quite nervous because there are a lot of enemies left. So where are they? And what's also really, uh, well, dangerous is that there are so many Japanese planes. <laughs> Key 84 is a J7. And in one case, they are insanely dangerous, uh, even to a backhand. And here we have some, some other planes joining in. We still have a Hornet high up, and another German Tempest. And uh, again, I go for the Tempest. Because I'm not even sure that that guy knows that I'm coming. Looks like he's fully uh, uh, looking on the Hornet who tries to fly away, and we, we get a quick shot on him. And T152, C3. Missed the first attack, but we get him, <laughs> and we get hit by our friendly Hornet here. Um, really lucky that he didn't damage me uh, critically. <laughs> Could have killed me easily there. Really desperate for a kill, so it looks like. So we're even more players down. Was the LF the Mark Twenty Two? There's Naval as well, which is not good, and the 190 high up. Luckily, I still have a Spitfire with me, and the Spitfire up high as well. And here, another showcase of the very nice stall climbing ability of the Bearcat, because even I don't have the speed, I still don't stall, and I'm able to 
follow him up a bit. And now he decides that it's time to run away. Which was probably right. The LF Mark 9 would have easily killed him at, uh, in when he would have tried to climb away. Still nervously looking around if the J J another J7 or something will come along. And here it's also good to see that the bear cat can also dive very well. <laughs> Way above 800 kilometers an hour. D13 really uses his better high speed low uh, roll rate and definitely uses his advantages against us. But now he's toast. He lost his speed and especially the Spitfire is <laughs> a lot more versatile at low altitude dogfighting. He's doing hard maneuvers. I think I crit him there. Um, didn't show up in the replay though. And yeah. The Spitfire got him. Got an assist for them. Um, at this point I was also pretty low on ammo. Um, I'm not sure. I think it was 190 rounds of cannon ammo. Which is not a lot if you know that there's still enemy fighters around. Two, to be exact. And we, we have still a Yak-9 at altitude. But I think we all know that the uh, Yak-9 doesn't really have the performance to contest uh, against J7Ws at, at the high altitude ranges. Also, in a, in a longer battle like this, um, the bear cat struggles slightly because you cannot web uh, like you can at the start of the battle. The bear cat has a I think a five minute uh, timer or something where I, it's pretty much you don't care what you do with the engine you can whip it all all day long in the first part of the match but the longer the match goes uh, the more problems you get with cooling the engine you sometimes have to throttle to 97 percent and then throw it back up. And now the Yak got killed by the J7, which is pretty bad for us. Two J7Ws at high altitude, where one of the players definitely showed that well, he can shoot. He already killed three of us. The second one, I'm not that concerned about. He's just flying around in circles and not really do con contributing anything to the team. Uh, but he's a distraction for us and he also... Well, he can spot for the other player as well. But at this point I was also pretty sure that that this, the second JSMW, the Zompo guy, he must be pretty low on ammo. And that was, I was thinking that if the second guy comes back, then he probably only has one or two bursts left in the J7. Because for longer engage uh, salvos, like I saw him do earlier when he was going head on against some of our teammates, he definitely lost a lot of his ammo doing that. And we are both trying to climb after the J7, who has a lot of altitude advantage. 
I think that guy must have a pretty bad crew, because he, otherwise he would have spotted us, um, I'm sure. Even though we are below him, which means spotting harder, but especially a Spitfire is already pretty close to him. Always looking around nervously where the where the second guy would be. At this point I decided to break off because I cannot really fly after the J7. And I was getting curious. Uh, maybe the the second J7 is returning to base, or was returning to base, and I was hoping that I could could get him while he was taking off, and so I decided to head in the other direction. At this point I was already happy that <laughs> I took enough fuel with me. Because with the web, you you lose a lot of fuel, not as much as in the Griffin Spitz, but you do, get, do lose a bit. You can see the the J7 in the picture in, in the framing there. I I lost it at, at first, but didn't realize it. Then I head back and also tell the Spitfire in the chat that he should watch his six. He realized uh, the danger he was in, and he's coming back now. Kudos to that guy, he definitely uh, tried to play together pretty much for the whole game. It's always a pleasure to see random players uh, actually do some teamwork. We, uh, we definitely would not have uh, played like we did in this game when we had, would have no teamwork at all. And the spit loops around and gets behind the J7, which apparently already got some damage. The earlier engagements. Spitfire sees that the second J7 is coming around and pulls the evasive maneuver. Which was the right thing to do, I think. And it also gives me the chance to uh, uh, in interfere in this two versus one situation. At this point, I'm also pretty sure that Spitfire doesn't really have cannon ammunition left. And not going for a head on. Trying to use only the animal that I have. He lights on fire, and so I think, well, I think I can turn away. But as it turns out, the fire wind goes out. Now he's tumbling to the earth, and I'm now <laughs> deciding. I'm not sure what to do at this point. Should I go for the J7 down there? Ah, uh, no, the Spitfire is going after him. Is he recovering? Yes, maybe, I don't know. And then I decide, well... Let's go for this guy. He's uh, definitely recovering. And... He's trying to avoid... It looks like he's heavily damaged too. Trying to conserve my the little bit of ammo that I have. And now he makes the mistakes and pulls up. And with the last kill rounds. I light him up. For the fifth kill. That's also something that uh, the back had really Excels at long engagements with a lot of kills, and you don't need to rearm. There are not that many 
planes in the game that can do that. And here I was wondering, what is going on? Why is the LF-9 dead? And why did he die only now from the from Spitfire? But the, the Spitfire, when I, uh, he he told, told me that he ran out of fuel. <laughs> Probably flying with a 20 minute uh, fuel capacity uh, in the LF-9, that's not gonna cut it for long adventures. So, thanks to to H. Alex here, H. S. Alex. Um, thanks to you, we were able to take home the victory and have a good time uh, fighting the Axis team there. Even though it was a, they had a lot of Japanese aircraft. So, this is the Spaded Bearcat. I think we. Most people know that that it is a very good plane. Um, has some drawbacks as high altitudes, but I can really highly recommend this plane to anyone who likes a high tier prop combat. Uh, the French tree, yeah, I'm pretty far, I think. Only we need the last two jets to get and two props to spade so yeah that's it for today guys see ya